Bonjour, madame. Bonjour. I want a small suite, please. It must be quiet. I have a very charming one facing the courtyard. May madame please sign her name? Merci, madame. In order to save inconvenience later, madame, will you kindly leave your passport here? Passport? I just drew up my passport at the airport. I'm very sorry, madame, but it's a government regulation. Oh. Traveling is becoming quite complicated these days, isn't it? Merci, madame. S'il vous plaît. Bonjour, madame. Will you show madame 254? Merci, s'il vous plaît. Is there anything wrong? Not at all. Everything will be all right, I assure you. Mrs. Brown. Thank you. Cinq francs. Don't you speak English? Uh, pas anglais, monsieur. Merci, monsieur. Merci. Uh, don't I get anything back? Merci, monsieur. Merci. No, no, money. Uh, change. Uh, back. Merci, monsieur. Merci beaucoup. Uh, don't rub it in. Uh, do you want me to wait? Merci beaucoup. Don't you like Bolshevism? Why, do you think you could earn your own living? No, no, that's the bad part about Bolshevism. But it has merit. For instance, if it hadn't been for the revolution, the Grand Duchess would still be in Russia, instead of providing us with such a delightful salon. And perhaps I should never have met you. <laughs> Pardon me, Your Highness. Who is this, Mr. Holton? I've never seen him before. I think an Englishman. He brings best regards from Captain Buckler. Captain Buckler. Oh, yeah. Let him wait in the reception room. I'll be a few minutes. The Grand Duchess will be delighted to see you, but I am afraid it will be a few moments. If you will be so kind as to step in here. Rue de la Tour, 314. Pardon, madame? Oh, Rue de la Tour, 314. Ah, oui, madame. May I announce, madame? Oh, just see an old friend. Listen, my man, this is very important. How can I reach Miss Field? What's that you say? Three, four, six, seven. What did you want? Pardon me, Your Highness. Who's playing the piano in there? The Englishman. Oh, I forgot more about it. Pardon me, Your Highness. There is a lady waiting who wants to see you. Who is she? She said she's an old friend. An old friend? Well, uh, tell her to leave her address and don't let her in again. All I want is a cup of tea and a sandwich. No. Mm -hmm. It isn't possible. It is I. <laughs> oh, 
You look marvelous. You know, I haven't seen you, not since I opened the salon. And I haven't heard from you in... In six years, Anna. Six? Well, why didn't you write to me? You know, I always like to keep track of my friends. That's why I didn't write to you. Oh. Uh, well, now, tell me everything. How is Rome? Rome? I haven't been in Rome for years. Has your husband been transferred? Husband? Oh, you mean Savoldi? Naturally. Oh, I didn't marry him. I broke the engagement. Why? Forgotten. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing now? At the moment, I'm in Paris. By the way, I'm not in Paris. Can I trust you? I swear. Anna, I'm in a rather difficult situation. Serious? Very. I really came to Paris to ask your advice. You know, I always give sensible advice. Yes, I know. But driving up here, I realized that I don't want any sensible advice. I want no sense, no logic, no reason. It can't help me at the moment. What's going on in Paris? Well... Will you excuse me? Hello. Hello. Oh, it's you. Look, may I, may I call you back in ten minutes? Do you want me to go out? Just a moment. You're so understanding. How do you do? How do you do? So kind of you to see me. I bring you best regards from Captain Buckler. Captain Buckler? You remember Willie Buckler. He always talked so much about you, and... He told me if you want to have an amusing time in Paris, go straight to the Grand Duchess and... And... Here I am. And there you are. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to have an amusing time in Paris? Mm, well... Uh... Well, we must see that you have a very amusing time. Sit down, please. Have you been in Paris before? Not since the war. How exciting for you. Yes, I'm thrilled. And I'm so glad to meet you. Thank you. Be seated, please. You're going to see Paris at its best. I'm so glad. Now, let me think. What could I suggest? Well, first of all, you would like to see the Louvre Museum. The what? One of the most interesting picture galleries in the world. You've heard of the Mona Lisa? Uh, yes, I, uh, I believe I have. Oh, you don't care for pictures? Oh, I know. The Eiffel Tower. You mean that, uh, that steel thing stuck up in the air? Your Highness, do you know what I'm afraid of? What? I'm afraid you're going to suggest Notre Dame. I was just coming to that. Madame, even if you could give me the history of each stone separately, I'm still not interested. Oh. No, I've found through life the days take care of themselves. It's the evenings that are so difficult. Oh, how stupid of me. You want me to arrange a party for you. A nice, large party. Not too large. Six? Four? Two? Two is the best suggestion. Why do you stare at me like that? He's completely off his head. What are you talking about? Butler, he described you as hard as nails. Much older and... Um, beginning to... Uh, beginning to spread. How unkind of him. I hope you don't think the description fits me. If he'd said one of the loveliest women in the world, I'd have recognized you anywhere. Encouraging. Thank you. Now, I wonder which one of my friends you would like. May I make a suggestion? Please. It would make our mutual friend Butler very happy if... Uh, if you would dine with me. I'm engaged. Oh. Well, then don't bother anymore. I'll have a couple of boiled eggs, a detective story, and go to bed. <laughs> Madame, have you ever been at the mercy of loneliness? Have you ever been a stranger in a strange city? Often. What did you do? I cry. Well, that's what I shall do.
Café Danube, nine o'clock. Eight thirty. Nine o'clock. But your highness. Oh, by the way, I'm not the Grand Duchess. What? Quarter to nine. Mr. Holton, how do you do? How do you do? You are the Grand Duchess Anna. Yes. Captain Buckler described you so accurately, I would have known you anywhere. Oh, thank you so much. Captain Buckler. I imagine he wants me to arrange something for you. Who would you like to meet? What would you like to do? Um, I'd like to see the Louvre Museum. The what? Yes, the Louvre, uh, the Eiffel Tower, oh, and most of all, Notre Dame. Are you sure you're a friend of Captain Buckler's? Mm-hmm. Well, well, well. Afraid I can't do anything for you. Oh, yes, you can. Tell me the name of the lady who was in the room a moment ago. Lady? I don't know. Was there a lady here? Oh, come, come. You know there was. Really, I don't know. I swear. All right. Goodbye, Your Highness. Mr. Holton, why do you want to know her name? <laughs> because I'm dining with her at a quarter to nine. You are a friend of Captain Buckler's. What a lovely song. What's the name of it? It has no name. I just made it up for you, madame. And for you, monsieur. Thank you. Thank you. You must have been very successful with women. What makes you say that? Nobody could order such a delicious dinner who wasn't. Am I a success with you? Tremendous. I wonder if I am. Why do you doubt it? Because here we are at the dessert and we know nothing about each other. You won't tell me your name. You won't even let me tell you mine. Oh, dear. Didn't we settle all that at the soup and again at the salad? Why spoil such a perfect evening with names? I don't want to know your name. Whatever it is, I know it wouldn't suit you. Thank you. Then I should hate to risk it. Besides, I know all about you. You do? Providence gave you gray eyes, brown hair, charming smile, great attraction. Everything else is unimportant. I'm content. You're married? Back to the soup and the salad. Why be so curious? Jealous. Just terribly jealous. I thought we were going to have an amusing evening. And now it's become serious. Desperately.
Who are you? I must know. Isn't it obvious? Not to me. You meet me at the house of the Grand Duchess. What were you doing there? You meet me at five o'clock. And at ten minutes past five, I agree to dine with you. A complete stranger. The shortest story in the world. Now tell me the true one. Very well, then. Perhaps it's dangerous for you to be with me. Perhaps I have a husband who will come in and shoot you. Perhaps I'm a spy, a thief. The police may come in and arrest me. Both of us. You're none of those things. If you were, it wouldn't matter. Now or any other time. I must have done something very nice in my life to be so beautifully rewarded. Do you really mean that? And so much more. You're an angel. Angel, that's what I shall call you. Angel. You're cold. Frightened. Of me? Much more serious. I'm frightened of myself. What a strange evening. I dined with you to be amused, to laugh, to laugh at you, and... And what? And say goodbye. Could you? I don't know. You must give me time. Please, a fortnight. A week. Next Wednesday at five o'clock at the Grand Duchess. You wait for me. If I come, I won't ask any questions. I'll go with you wherever you ask me to. And if you don't come? Then you must forgive me. Never look for me. Forget that I ever existed. Swear. Promise that you'll do that for me, please. If I did, it would be a promise I couldn't keep. I don't care who you are or what you are. All I know is... What? I love you. You'll never go out of my life. I'll never let you go. Merci beaucoup. Angel! 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 Oh, 
How's everything, Wilson? The Foreign Secretary wants you on the telephone, sir. Get me the minutes of Thursday's meeting, Article 6, Section 5D. Also, Friday's meeting, all of Article um, 2. Well, Mr. Wilton, how are you? Glad to see you back, my dear Graham. Thank you. How's everything at Geneva? Oh. Is there going to be a war? Well, it looks as if Europe is going to have peace, at least for the next three weeks. We had rather a hard fight, you know. Twenty-one nations lined up against us, but we won. I hear France was making some difficulties. Well, what can you expect from the French? Yeah. You realize the French delegate hasn't even a manservant? Appalling. But on the other hand, the Russians were the surprise of their life. We had two Soviet delegates to dinner. You may not believe it, but I assure you they were properly dressed. Tailcoats, white ties. Well, well, well. Maybe the Russians are going places. Oh, well, I wouldn't come to hasty conclusions. They still dunk. I shan't need you anymore this evening. Good night, night sir. Good night. would be outrageous. You can't disturb the master at this time. The telegram may contain matters of state. But how would you justify your action if it were only a personal matter? I'm afraid you'd be criticized very harshly. My dear Mr. Wilton, may I remind you of what our master always says? A statesman must have the courage to be unpopular. What is it? A telegram, my lady. Oh, thank you. I didn't want to wake you up. You were sleeping so peacefully, I hadn't the heart to disturb you. <laughs> You're always so considerate. No, oh, I watched you for a long time. You had the loveliest expression. I was dreaming. About me? Oh, naturally, of course. I dreamt you were a great success at the League of Nations. Well, I was. 
Sweetheart, your husband defeated 21 nations. Oh, you must be worn out. Not at all. I feel better than ever. <laughs> Good. What else did you dream about? Mm, let me see. Oh, yes. I came into the League of Nations, dressed in the most striking Paris gown. All the delegates rose to their feet, staring at me. But I walked straight to you. I wanted to kiss you. But you were talking. So I walked out. I went to Egypt, and from Egypt I went to China, from China I went to Arabia, I circled the whole globe. Finally, I came back to the League of Nations. You were still talking. <laughs> so I took you away. I took you to Paris. We walked in the park at night. You had your arm around me. Suddenly, I sat down on a bench. I was cold and frightened. Of me? Huh? Oh. <laughs> I got mixed up. I dreamt that yesterday. Let me see. Oh, I have it. I lost you in Paris. The next thing I remember, we were here at home and you were beating me. Oh. What did you do? I'm afraid to tell you. I liked it. And then you started to kiss me. And you liked that too? Better than ever before. And you carried me upstairs. And? There was a knock at the door and I woke up. Oh, how cruel. <laughs> no, how wonderful. It's true, the dream is over. But it doesn't have to be. Oh, I'm so glad you're home, my darling. Uh, tell me, who knocked at the door? Oh, Graham. At this time of the night, why? A telegram. Darling, was it so important? Oh, it didn't open, but it was for you. Where is it? There on your table. Bad news? Very disturbing. What's worrying you? France? No. Yugoslavia. Yeah, I, I hope you don't mind. I... Oh, that's all right, dear. I understand. I understand perfectly. Good night, dear. Good night, dear. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How's the weather today? Not bad, sir. Why, Wilton? Darling, here are some thrilling news from Mrs. McGillicuddy. Wilton, this is the nicest thing you've ever brought to the breakfast table. My heartiest congratulations. Thank you, sir. And mine. Thank you, Milady. What a pretty girl. All her friends think she ought to act in the films. You see, sir, she once was photographed in a newsreel at the funeral of Admiral Bennington. She was standing on the pavement just as a hearse went by. I hope I don't seem disrespectful, sir. But in my opinion, she stole the show from the late Admiral. <laughs> That's love. And I'm sure she loves you just as much. Oh, she worships me, sir. But it was by no means an easy conquest. The young lady didn't believe in the institution of marriage. But you persuaded her. Oh, no. Begging your pardon, sir. It was you, sir. And you, milady. We? Oui? We? Oui. I took the liberty of citing you both as an example of how beautiful marriage can be. And that convinced her. Did you hear that? Perhaps we should stage a rousing quarrel, so that we won't feel quite so responsible. It's a lovely idea. 
What should we quarrel about? Well, I might say I'm a neglected wife. No, darling. I'm afraid we couldn't quarrel about that, because I'd agree with you. Oh, anyway, it's bad. Complaining wives are such a bore. You should be able to find something better. I have it. You're jealous. A very charming woman is in love with me. I could believe that. Thank you. But I wouldn't quarrel about it. I would do just the opposite. I would try to be twice as charming as the charming lady. I'm sure it wouldn't be difficult for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you're an angel. Thank you. By the way. Yes, dear? Someone is in love with me. I'm crazy about him. I've decided to leave you. I'm already packed. I wonder what you would do. I certainly wouldn't quarrel. It would be too late. Darling, isn't it a shame? Here we are, two reasonably intelligent people, and we can't find anything to quarrel about. We're complete failures. Perhaps we are. I'm sure we are. We might just as well face it. We're a hopelessly happy married couple. <laughs> 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 Just, uh, just something I made up. That's nice. Da -da 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 -da. It's beautiful. Darling, I didn't know you had so much talent. Come on, let's hear the rest of it. Oh, no, no. Oh, come no. on, come no, on. No, Don't no, be no, timid. No. Come on, let's hear it. I'm not in the mood. Oh, a temperamental artist, eh? No, not exactly. But you see, I don't know what the end is going to be. Well, you certainly found a lovely beginning. Almost too lovely. Oh, you must finish it. It's not so easy. Well, I don't know. And the beginning is so beautiful, I wonder if the end matters. Mm. It's an old tune, but it's still good. Because I played badly. But you danced so divinely. I don't think I'm such a good dancer. You were a rotten dancer. You stepped on my toes and you ruined my shoes. But still I say you danced so divinely. What's the matter? You took me back to Vienna. Now, was that nice? What was the name of that little hotel? Mm. I don't remember the name or how we got there. All I remember is... It was glorious, wasn't it? And what a hotel. Let's forget it, shall we? Oh, no, no. I could never forget it. The service was too awful. They had every inconvenience. Do you realize there was no lift? We climb four flights of stairs. And sometimes two at a time. What a hotel. And when we got to the top of the stairs, what did we find? Two small, badly furnished rooms. Were there two? Certainly, there was a sitting room, darling. <laughs> mm. This is the thrill of my life. I don't want to miss a thing. You must tell me who everybody is. Just dance me, buddy. Afternoon, Mr. Breckenridge. Oh, is that Mr. Breckenridge? Yes, yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Very modest man. To look at him, you wouldn't dream he's Lord Straighton's butler. How do you do, Mademoiselle Mopon? Lady Trellingham's personal name. You don't say. Oh, darling, this is so fascinating, seeing all these people in the flesh. Love me? Exactly. Hello, John. Interesting case. He was Lord Aldergate's valet for 20 years, but it didn't last. They differed in their political views. The situation finally became impossible when Lord Aldergate joined the Labour Party. Hello, George. Hi, you touch. Oh, hello! Who's that? Uh, uh, an American chauffeur. 
Now, let's see if I can find Lady Park. There she is. The one in the black dress, just in front of the staircase. Are you sure it's nothing serious? No, no, no. Just a headache, but it's terribly annoying. I think I'll go with you. Please, no. I'll go home and lie down for an hour and I'll be all right. You go back to your guests. I beg your pardon, Sir Frederick. May I? Uh, it's for the Consolidated Press. Certainly. Thank you, sir. I'd rather not, dear. Oh, it only takes a second, Lady Barker. Please, no. I'm very sorry. Some other time. Well, thank, thank you very much, sir. Yes. I hope you don't mind, darling, but I'm not in the mood for a picture. I know I don't look well. That's perfectly all right. You sure you don't want to take you home? Positive. You'll stay and have a good time. Take her leadership home and drive carefully. Yes, sir. Oh, how is your wife? She'll be all right. Just a little headache. Now, don't forget Saturday. No, one o'clock. One o'clock, right. Now. Here's your ticket, old man. Oh, thank you, Tony. I wonder if you're right about landslide. Well, I think she's the best bet of the day. Oh, by the way, I'm getting quite a lot of interesting fellas together for Saturday. Good. Which one is landslide? Oh, yes, there she is. Who's going to be there on Saturday? Oh, it's the Duke of Bainsbury, Earl of Avonborough, Argentine ambassador. There'll be about 20 of us all together. Well, I think Pleasant luncheon. Yes, very nice, very nice indeed. I'm very glad of this opportunity to meet you, Sir Frederick. As a matter of fact, I've been looking forward to it. Thanks. I have a feeling that you and I might find some very interesting things to talk about. I'm quite sure we could. Yes, these are very exciting times. <laughs> uh, Sir Frederick. Yes? I wonder if you know who I am. Well, certainly. Devin has been telling me about you. You're his house guest, aren't you? You were in India for quite a while. Right. I still wonder if you know who I am. Mr. Halton, aren't you? Yes, doesn't that name mean anything to you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm at a complete loss. Sir Frederick, you once deliberately stole my overcoat. I beg your pardon. However, I helped myself to a pair of your gloves. This, this sounds like a mystery story. No, no, just a war anecdote. Oh, what was your regiment? I was in the Warwickshire, 10th Battalion. I was Lester's machine guns. Let me see, I don't think the two regiments ever came together. Neither did we. But during 1916 and 17, you went to Paris several times on leave. Yes, that's right, I did. We were very young. And she was charming. Who? Paulette. Do you mean Paulette Fouchardier? Paulette Fouchardière, modiste, third floor, hemstitching and embroidery. Are you Poochie? Yes, Snooky. Well, let me have a look at you. You didn't have a moustache then, did you? No. Your picture was on the small table. Right next to the little silver box. With the bird on top. And when you opened it... It played O Solo Mio. Oh, oh. Ah, she was lovely, wasn't she? Paulette Fouchard, yeah. Mm. Ah, what a rotten trick Napoleon played on her great-great-grandfather. Hmm. If Napoleon had kept his promise... After the Battle of Valenciennes. Which Grandpapa really won. Then, Grandpapa would have married the Duchess of Parma. And Paulette would have become the Princess of Naples. Mm. 
I wonder whatever became of her. To the Princess of Naples. The Princess. It's very kind of you, Lady Bernstein. We'd love to come. Your parties are always so delightful. But you see, we intend to leave next Saturday. <laughs> yes, I'm terribly excited. It's our first trip in ages. Well, thank you so much. My compliments to Lord Bernstein and little Beatrice. Goodbye. May I come in? Of course. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, darling. Dressing already? The opera starts at eight, doesn't it? Oh, the opera, huh? Now, darling, you promised. And I'm going to keep my promise. You love opera? I hate opera, so why shouldn't we go? Have a nice luncheon? Very. I discussed the naval situation with the French attaché. It looks promising. You must have taken the Navy all around the world and discussed each battleship separately. Hmm? Why? What time is it? Oh, good heavens. I meant to leave right after lunch, but... Oh, I have lots of amusing things to tell you. I met an old friend. We were in the war together. We began reminiscing. We had a couple of drinks. Good old Poochie. Good old what? Uh, Poochie did. Poochie. <laughs> what a curious name. That's what we used to call him in the war. Poochie Halton. His, his real name is Anthony. He once practically saved my life. Great fellow. Great fellow. Only don't you think you'd better get dressed? We don't want to miss the overture. No, oh, no. We don't want to miss the overture. We might as well see the whole thing through from the bitter beginning. <laughs> Quite a fellow, this Halton. Oh. I say, did you ever hear of a Grand Duchess, Anna Dmitrievna? Anna Dmitrievna? She's a Russian emigre. Lives in Paris. Yes, I've heard of her. Why? This fellow Halton told me the most fantastic story. He's an extraordinary fellow. Isn't this my nail file? I don't know, darling. It is, dear, it is. How do you suppose it got here? I haven't the faintest idea. Graham, will you be good enough to hand me my nail file? You're going to the opera tonight, sir. Yes, yes, that's where I'm going. If I may say so, sir, my favorite opera is Cavalleria Rusticana. It's only one act, but it has everything. Love, jealousy, hate, murder, and all in 35 minutes. I timed it once. Isn't that the one where the husband suspects his wife of singing with another man? And catches them, right in the middle of a beautiful duet. He kills him, doesn't he? Well, not immediately. No, sir. First, he joins him in the most exquisite trio. Naturally. After Cavalleria Rusticana, my favorite opera is The Barber of Seville. The Barber's song is particularly beautiful. My memory is, how does it go? Graham, whoever persuaded you to become a valet must have been a music lover. Oh, thank you, sir. Shall I draw your bath, sir? Please. You were saying something a while ago about this Grand Duchess Anna. Yes. Well, this fellow Halton's gone completely mad over a woman. You know, he really is a very nice fellow. Lived four years in India, did some fine government work. The man has a splendid career ahead of him. I do hope he doesn't do anything foolish. You mean because of this woman? Yes, he can't seem to get her out of his mind. Do you know where he met her? At this... Grand Duchess's Salon. You remember the novel, An Afternoon in Paris? Yes. It's undoubtedly the same kind of place. Oh, I see. And that's where you met the woman? Gives you a pretty accurate picture of the lady. Rather obvious, isn't it? Oh, it's probably just an adventure. Oh, no. Not with him. No, no. Why, that man's been looking for her in every possible place in Paris. What's more, he's going back again. His mind is made up. Nobody can talk him out of it. Here, Mary Glenbrook over there. 
Mm. Everybody seems to be here tonight. Everybody seems to be looking at us. At you, rather. Do you suppose your friend is here tonight? Halton, no, he couldn't come. He's telephoning tomorrow. He's trying to cancel another engagement and have lunch with us, all right? Yes, why not? They certainly are looking at you. You know, a man shouldn't take a woman seriously unless he can be proud of her. At least she should be fit to sit at the head of his table. Not someone you just meet in Paris, meet her in the afternoon, and the same evening she dines at your apartment. So she went to his apartment? Oh, certainly. Darling, look, the Duchess of Loamshire over there to your left. Oh, naturally, he didn't say that. He tried to romanticize the whole story. A night in the park, a bouquet of violets, the lady disappears. Hello, Barker. So glad to see you. You know, Holton, it's been a long time since I've had as many drinks as I had yesterday. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I had a few too many myself. <laughs> I'm awfully glad you got out of that other engagement. You know, well, it's funny. I, I've only known you since yesterday, and yet I... <laughs> I, I feel the same way. <laughs> it is funny, isn't it? <laughs> uh, well, uh, come on, let, let, let's sit down. I've been following your career in the papers, old man. I admire what you've done. I admire your courage, your wit, and sometimes the, the daring with which you tackle your problems. I'm... I'm proud to be in your house. Thanks. You know, I've been thinking about you a great deal. <laughs> now, I hope that little story of mine hasn't worried you. It's an unusual story. I shouldn't mind reading it in a novel. But I'd hate to be the hero of it. Or even have... have a friend of mine. Well, thanks, Parker. Believe me, Halton, a man shouldn't go out of his way to create handicaps for himself. I imagine that's exactly what Brutus told Caesar when Caesar said, uh, Brutus, I've just met a little Egyptian girl by the name of, uh, of Cleopatra. And she's driving me crazy. Well, if I remember my history correctly, Caesar got over it, didn't he? Right. But my dear man, Cleopatra wasn't Angel. If Caesar had ever met Angel, it would have changed the history of the Roman Empire. Yes, it probably would have collapsed 200 years earlier. Well, what are 200 years in history? 25 pages. But one hour with Angel... 60 minutes. 3,600 seconds. <laughs> well, I give up. It's always ridiculous to reason with a man in love. And I'm afraid you are a man in love. I don't know. It may be more than love or less than love. Well, man, make up your mind. What is it? It's... It's a certain feeling. It's a secret that belongs to two people. And to those two people alone. But something you can't. Good heavens, Barker, haven't you ever lost your head completely over a woman? Haven't you ever felt that now at last you can stop searching? You found it, there it is. Yes, I have. And you're going to meet her. Hold it, I'm afraid you and I expect different things from love. Probably from life. I don't measure in terms of seconds, but of years. How about a gin and tonic? Not a bad idea. It's a charming place you have here, Barker. Like it? I say, that's a lovely picture. That's your wife's photograph, I suppose. Naturally.
Mr. Holton has arrived, my lady. Thank you. Here. How do you do, Mr. Horton? How do you do? My husband told me so much about you. Won't you sit down? Cigarette? Thank you. Thank you. I hope I didn't come down too soon. Of course not, darling. Reunion of two old friends. Are you sure I didn't interrupt? No, no, we just finished the most interesting discussion. The newest subject in the world. Love. Oh, love. But we disagreed completely. Really? Yes, we see the same thing, but with entirely different eyes. It's amazing. It's, it's like two men looking at the same lamp. One says the shade is blue. The other one swears it's green. But you forget, Barker. Frederick. Oh, I'm sorry. Frederick. We both could be right, you know. Perhaps the lampshade is blue. But when you light it up, it may be the greenest green in the world. Don't you think so, Lady Barker? Gentlemen, the sun is shining so brightly. Don't you think it's rather early in the day to be talking about lamps? I'd rather talk about you, Mr. Horton. You've been in India. Yes. Are you going to stay in England for a while? Oh, no, no, he's going back to Paris in a day or so. Oh. Well, uh, I may have to change my plans. Well, that's interesting. When did this happen? Oh, as a matter of fact, today. Yes, I may have to stay a little longer. How fortunate for you to be here at the best part of the year. There's so much going on. There's the ballet, and next week there'll be the women in tennis. Oh, darling, I'm afraid we are going to miss the matches. Hmm? Frederick and I are taking a little trip. Oh. Did you make up your mind, dear, where you want to go? Mm, I have several very interesting ideas. I'm dying to hear them. And now, shall we have lunch? Mr. Wilton, what do you think of this fellow, Halton? Oh, nice fellow, but I should say a trifle dull. Talks about Paris, 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 and again Paris. Williams, give me the crumb tray. What is it? Crumbs at her ladyship's place. She seems to be playing with the bread. Ladyship seems to be a bit nervous, eh? No, merely bored. And how this Halton brags. He knows a man who knows every stone in Notre Dame. Now, would you call that an accomplishment? <laughs> and who cares how high the Eiffel Tower is? Do you? You know, Mr. Wilton, we're used to such brilliant conversation in this house that sometimes I wonder if we're not a little spoiled. Yes, quite true. There's always the danger of one's becoming blasé. <laughs> Sir Frederick just told a delightful joke. The one about the Scotchman who wanted to buy a grand piano. And ended up by humming? Good. He tells it superbly. Thank heaven things seem to be brightening up. I'm glad. <laughs> well, they must be finished. Hello? Oh, it's you, Emma. Well, we're at luncheon. I'm pretty busy just now. Yes, I am angry. Frankly, I'm furious. Unless you can explain where you learned to dance the rumba, I'm through. Goodbye. Whose plate is this? Her ladyship's. But she hardly touched it. Can there be anything wrong with the meat? I hardly think so, Mr. Will. Perhaps she just had a late breakfast. Whose plate is this? Uh, Mr. Halton's. But he hasn't eaten either. It's obvious that he tried. Maybe there is something wrong. Let's see Sir Frederick's plate. No, it's not the meat. 
I tell you, Mr. Halton talked so much. Or maybe he doesn't like Veal. That's quite possible. Mm -hmm. At any rate, make a note. If Mr. Halton should come again, no Veal. Very well, Mr. Wilton. Don't you think so, darling? Yes, very beautiful. Thank you. You know, Tony, the fact that I like it doesn't mean anything. But Maria, now she's a great composer. Now, Frederick. Where does she compose the loveliest song? Now, please, Frederick. Come on, play it, darling. Yes, why don't you, Lady Barker? Don't make us coax you. All right. Now, let me see. How does it go? You know, Frederick, I think I've forgotten it. Oh, that's too bad. Well, it wasn't very nice. Now, how did it go? The way I heard a delightful tune in Paris. I wonder if I remember it. Now, gentlemen, you're both working too hard. I insist that you relax, please. I play you something, something even better. Frederick went out. It's a lovely waltz, isn't it? First time I heard it, I was dancing with Frederick. It takes me right back to Vienna. It was our first dance together. I think it has a beautiful melodic quality, don't you? Hello, Angel. I beg your pardon? Angel. What do you mean, Mr. Horton? It seems incredible. What seems incredible? That I should find you here in this house. His wife. It's like a dream. I still don't understand you, Mr. Horton. I don't understand you. We're alone, Angel. Darling, how long are you going to keep this up? Mr. Horton, you're obviously confusing me with another woman. Oh, no, I'm not. There can't possibly be two of you. I'm afraid there must be. I haven't been in Paris for, oh, for the last six months. You haven't been in Paris for the last six months? I told you so. And I think that should satisfy you. It really seems to be a terrific coincidence. The lady with whom you had your adventure... Wasn't it more than that? <laughs> Maybe it was. At least I thought so. Maybe the lady thought so, too. But it's impossible for me to read the mind of a woman I never saw nor heard of. In other words, to you it was. Just an adventure. Now, Mr. Holton, I insist that we settle this once and for all. Look at me. Look at me carefully. And I'm sure you will realize as clearly as I do that I'm Lady Barker. And nobody else. The resemblance is amazing. I could have sworn it was you. You have exactly her hair. Her eyes. Her skin. Her lips. But when I listen to you, I begin to see the difference. You're not Angel. I'm greatly relieved. 
Will you forgive me? Actually. You know, Mr. Holton, I think this resemblance will always create embarrassment between us. It's unfortunate, but for my own comfort and peace, and certainly for yours, don't you think you might find some excuse not to come here anymore? You have a lovely home, Lady Barker. It's an exquisite taste. I suppose this is the kind of house every woman dreams of having. And you're the wife of a charming and famous man. You must be very happy, Lady Barker. I am. Don't be afraid. I won't play it. I shall never play it. I hope I never hear it again. Thank you. Maria. I told you in Paris never to look for me. Never to recognize me whenever and wherever you find me. The whole thing must be forgotten. And I told you I'd never keep such a promise that I didn't care who you were. All I know is that I love you. And I'll never let you out of my life. I will fight with everything at my command if you should try to destroy my home. Why did you ever come to Paris? Tell me, why? Why did you leave me and go back to London? It doesn't exactly seem to make sense. None whatsoever. But it's the privilege of a woman not to make sense. Men who expect women to be logical are likely to be fearless and love. Have you ever been in love? Not with you. I never told you I loved you. Never. Can't you remember what I said? Every word. Every syllable. You said you had gray eyes. Brown hair. Charming smile. Great attraction. But you still have. That's why I want you to go. Oh, go, please go. Every moment you are here, my home is in danger. Go, I beg you, I tell you. Maria. Angel. Come in. Wilton, would you see if you can find Sir Frederick? Yes, lady. Present moment, I'm definitely against it. Is, uh, is Hamilton with you? Uh, well, come in. Has he sent the papers over? Good. No, I'm not disturbed, but I'd rather worry now than later. All right, thank you. Goodbye. I beg pardon, sir. Oh, just a moment. <laughs> Well, uh, well, what is it, Bob? Her ladyship is asking for you, sir. Oh, all right. I'm expecting a telephone call from Mr. Hamilton. Let me know immediately. I'm very sorry. It's just one of those things. Darling. Hmm? I'm afraid Mr. Horton has to leave. Is it so late? I'm terribly sorry, Tony. I was called to the telephone. I thought it would only take a minute. Do you really have to go? Well, I don't know. I... How about another drink? I tried my best to persuade Mr. Horton to stay. But I'm afraid I'm a complete failure. Failure? Well, Lady Barker, really, I, I had another engagement, but now I must stay at least long enough to turn your failure into success. Good. I would like to have a drink, too. You? You want whiskey, darling? Just a little. Just enough to drink to our friend, Mr. Horton. Thank you, dear. Here's to you, Mr. Horton. And to Angel. After you left, Mr. Horton told me the most amazing thing that happened to him in Paris. Everything I told you last night. Do you mind? Not at all. 
It's always good to get a woman's point of view. It's a thrilling story, and I listen to every word with great suspense. Mr. Horton, you described every detail with such love and care, yet you omitted the most important part of the story. You failed to describe the woman. Yes, what does she look like? It's rather difficult to find the exact words to. Now, I think you're being unfair. After all, you can't leave us like the daily installment of a newspaper serial to be continued in our next. You've roused our interest to such a degree that Frederick and I are entitled to know a lot more about the lady. Now, I insist, Mr. Horton. What did she look like? She was radiant. Exciting. These are generalities, Mr. Horton. You're talking like a poet. I see. You want the matter-of-fact description of... Shall we say a detective? That's exactly what we want. Well, then. Her eyes were brown. And her hair was dark. May I be permitted to change your toast to the most charming hostess? Yourself, Lady Parker. Thank you. Well, I must be going. Thank you for a lovely afternoon. Goodbye, Lady Parker. Mr. Halton, since I've had the privilege of enjoying your confidence, may I indulge in a little advice? Do. Mr. Hamilton on the telephone? Yes, sir. Yes, Hamilton? Yes, will you read it to me? Huh? Mm -hmm. You wanted to give me some advice, Lady Bell? No, Hamilton, I mean the second subcommittee report. I'm afraid Angel is far from blameless. But I think you should forget her. And perhaps even forgive her. I've already forgiven her, but... Let me have clause five. But what? I'm going to Paris. I'll be in Paris next Wednesday. It'll be useless. If there's a chance, one chance in a million. I'm sure there's not. I'll be waiting for her at the Grand Duchess's. You'll only be torturing yourself. I'll be there Wednesday at five o'clock. No, the papers haven't come yet, no. I'll be there hours before five. All right, Hamilton, goodbye. Well, goodbye. I'll see you out. Goodbye, Tony. These papers just came from Mr. Hamilton's. Oh, good. By the way, Greenwood, I'm going to Geneva. Oh, didn't you tell me that Mr. Hamilton is going, sir? Mm, I changed my mind. Oh. I thought it was only a subcommittee meeting. It is, and I'm quite sure Mr. Hamilton would handle it very ably, but you know me, Greenwood. I'd be uncomfortable if I didn't go myself. <laughs> I see, sir. In that case, you won't require the other reservations. Which other reservations? For your trip with Lady Barker. Good heavens, I've forgotten all about it. Frederick, you're not working, are you? No, no, I'm awfully sorry, but something unexpected. Frederick! Is this where we are going? Why, that's wonderful. Oh, darling, I can hardly wait. Let's have a glorious time. Let's, let's be foolish again. Oh, I can't tell you how much. Why, what's the matter? Well, dear. Don't tell me. Don't tell me we are not going. Don't tell me now. You see, I don't know, you, you see. It's perfectly all right. Yeah, you must understand. Don't explain. It's very clear. You have to do your duty. You know. I know. I know very well. Too well. I can recite all the reasons. I know them by heart. Oh, I beg your pardon. It's perfectly all right, Mr. Greenwood. Come in. Now you go back to your work, dear, and don't let me disturb you. Thank you, darling. About the reservation, sir. Oh, yes. The Geneva plane stops in Paris only 20 minutes. Now, I believe you'll require at least four hours in Paris. Oh, perhaps even more. I have a good many things to discuss at the embassy. I thought so, sir. And in that case, the airways people suggest a private plane. They say they can put one of their newest machines at your disposal. In fact, the same plane that Lady Barker chartered last week. Lady Barker chartered a plane? That's what they said, sir. It, uh, it must have been Wednesday. You were in Geneva. Oh, yes, of course I remember. That's all right, thank you, Greenwood. I'll let you know later. Very good, sir. Be 
Croydon, 2046. Is that Imperial Airways? I want to speak to the manager, Sir Frederick Barker. Oh, good evening. About that private plane, is it the same one that Lady Barker took? Mm-hmm. She says it's not so fast. Oh, you say it made Paris in one hour and 40 minutes. That's very good. I'll take it, all right. Thank you. Finished your work? Quite. Frederick? Yes? When are you leaving for Geneva? On Wednesday morning, by plane. Doesn't the plane stop in Paris? Yes, I believe it does. I've been thinking, why couldn't you take me along as far as Paris and then pick me up on your way back? That's an excellent idea. I really need some new clothes. I haven't done any shopping for quite a while. Besides, it'll do you good to get away from London. It'll be a change for you. Yes, it would. Well, then I shall make arrangements for Wednesday, shall I? Thank you. Hello? Oh, Sir Frederick. Are you? Geneva? Oh, when are you leaving? Oh. Yes? Yes, this is Lord Dabington's house. You wish to speak to Mr. Halton? Who's calling, please? Just one moment, Sir Frederick. Grand Duchess, if you please. Thank you, Monsieur. Come in. I'll come in a moment. Now, Mr. Halton, I wouldn't be impatient. If a lady makes an appointment for five o'clock, you shouldn't expect her until six. The kind of lady who comes on time really wouldn't be worth waiting for. Oh, if you should get bored, there's always the cocktail bar. You might find some interesting people. Thank you, I'll wait here. Just as you like. You may be sure we let you know the moment she arrives. Angel. Charming name, Mr. Halton. Bravo. Sir Frederick. Yes. And the Grand Duchess Anna. How do you do? Will you have a step this way, please? Will you sit down? Thank you. 
To what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? Well, at a party a few days ago, your name was mentioned, and the charm and glamour of your salon. Oh, thank you very much. I hope you won't be disappointed. Let me see, it's after five. You might find some very interesting people at the cocktail bar. No, no, thank you. Or perhaps a little roulette. Or if you've no plans for this evening, I might arrange a little dinner. You're very kind, Your Highness. But, you know, at this party I just referred to, a certain young lady was mentioned. And her description roused my curiosity. Well, I'd be very glad to do anything I can to arrange an introduction, if you'll give me the lady's name. That's the difficulty. Her name seems to be rather a mystery. But I wonder if this might give you a clue. The person describing her referred to her as Angel. Angel? Angel, that's a strange name. Uh, rather charming, but I'm afraid... Now, uh, look here, Your Highness. Is there any way in which I might refresh your memory? Really, I have an excellent memory. But I don't seem to remember that name at all. Perhaps this might help, Your Highness. I would be willing to contribute generously to any charitable institution you might care to name. Oh, well, I... Uh... Or perhaps it would be better if the contribution were placed at uh, your disposal. Well, that's very kind of you. We always have the needy with us, but uh, unfortunately... Come in. Pardon me, Your Highness, but your Aunt Sonia is here. Always these interruptions. Oh, well, she'll have to wait. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, just a moment, Gregory. Perhaps I'd better see her. Uh, she's an elderly lady. Uh, would you mind? I'll be back in a moment. Not at all. Thank you. Hello, Frederick. Hello, Maria. Strange place to meet you, isn't it? Rather strange. May I ask what you are doing here? Curiosity. You see, the lady known as Angel caught my imagination. You mean you stayed in Paris? You actually missed the conference in Geneva? Merely to find out if Angel is a brunette. Well, Frederick, that's marvelous. I can hardly believe it. You really let all Europe wait just to find out if a woman is a brunette. Or a blonde. As a matter of fact, Frederick, she is a blonde. You remember when Mr. Horton described the lady? Yes. He seemed rather uncomfortable. Shall I tell you why? Before you came in, he described her differently. Would you like to know what he said? Very much. He said she had blonde hair, blue eyes, my figure, and a slight foreign accent. Sounds like a description of you. It does, doesn't it? Well, it annoyed me that there should be another woman in this world who looks exactly like me. It disturbed my vanity. You know how women are. So I came here to find out. Did you see her? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, she's in the next room. And does she look like you? Exactly. You were in Paris last Wednesday? Yes, that's right. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you ask me? Did you ever ask me? Did you ever ask me what I do when you go to Geneva, when you go to Locarno, when you have your conferences, your committees, your subcommittees? Did you ever ask me anything? Maria, how many times have you been here before? Are you really interested? What kind of life have you been leading? What kind of woman are you? Does it really worry you? As much as Yugoslavia worries you? How many times have you been here before? Answer me, tell me. Frederick, you're getting nervous. To think that my wife, whom I trusted, whom I was proud of, to think that you could come to a place like this. Frederick, you're jealous. Angel. You are Angel. Now, why should I be Angel? Why should I be so foolish? Why should I do such a thing? Don't I have a lovely home, a celebrated husband, the best servants, every comfort, social position? Is there anything more a woman could ask? Why should I be Angel? What reason could I have? Perhaps you can think of one. Frederick? Ah, 
Now, Frederick, if you go into that room, I'm afraid our marriage is over. If you find Angel in there, you'll be happy that I'm not Angel. And you'll want to continue our old life. That would not be satisfactory to me. And if I don't find Angel? In that case, I think you'll want to see your lawyer as soon as possible. On the other hand, if you don't go in at all, you'll be a little uncertain. You won't be quite so sure of yourself. Or of me. And that might be wonderful. Did you tell Mr. Holton that lady was here? No, Your Highness, I swear he must have seen that come out of the taxi. Who told you I came? I understand Frederick's here. He's in the other room. Or maybe he's gone. I don't know. Anyway, it's all over. It's silly how upsetting a little thing like saying goodbye to one's husband can be. It's silly, isn't it? Tony. Hello, Frederick. You know the... That story you told me about Angel interested me so much that I... I couldn't resist coming here. Well, I've met her. You see, Maria, in the last few moments, I've thought more about our married life than in all the years we've been together. And all I know is, the train to Vienna leaves at 10. I, I don't know how you feel about Vienna. You have plenty of time to think it over. Well, I say goodbye to Angel. And so must you, Maria, if you decide to meet me at the station. <laughs> 